All right, any questions? No? Remember, our homework uh, three, phase two, is due uh, this, uh, uh, this Friday at midnight. Uh, so keep that in mind. Hopefully, you've gotten a good start on it already. Uh, also note on Piazza, we put up more tips on uh, bad designs that we've been seeing or been hearing about uh, and things to avoid. So uh, to pick up where we left off last time, uh, we were, ha we were uh, almost done with creating this uh, film table. Uh, we decided that we wanted a film ID. Remember that we're, we're following a, a, a more modern con convention here that matches basically what you do in Java with a uh, upper camel casing for the table name, singular of course, lower camel casing for the, uh, the column names. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the style that I'm following here is for the primary keys, uh, we're going to follow the table name plus ID at the end. Uh, it's going to be an integer. Uh, all keys should be integers so that you avoid issues with um, uh, string comparisons, inefficiencies, and other ancillary issues like case sensitivity and stuff like that. Uh, this is going to be a primary key. Remember, every table should have a, pro a primary key that's not allowed to be null and is auto-incremented. Uh, it's not that important that it's not null, but th there's, it's a primary key that's unique, so there would only ever be one record that would be null, and that's kind of useless. So uh, we generally want them a uh, primary key, not null, auto-increment. We decided that there was going to be a title, and by putting not null here, we decided that that had to be required, that, the, that we, you can't insert a film record into this database without a proper title. We also had release date, uh, which is a, a, also a string, var char, but much smaller, only 50. Uh, we said that uh, we, we could put in not null uh, here as well and say that that's required. But by having a default here, that means that you, uh, when you insert a record, you're not required to provide one. One will be provided for you if you don't. Right? And it's just this placeholder value of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Right? Uh, we also had an IMDB rating, which was a double. That's just like a, a, a programming double, 64-bit, usually 64-bit. IEEE 754 floating point number, you know, 17 digits of accuracy. Uh, we had a gross earn. Well, you can change that to a float if you don't need that much, uh, or just keep it a double here. Uh, we had gross earnings, which is a double, uh, and EIDR, uh, which is a uh, we, which we saw um, with, uh, that 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 that's like an external key, like a natural key uh, that is produced by another entity. Uh, and if it's produced by another entity, we don't want that to be our primary key because we don't want the integrity of our database to be dictated by something that we don't control. Uh, so we, but we did make it into a key and made it unique so that you don't have two films with two the same EIDRs, right? Uh, just like you wouldn't have two books with the same ISBNs or two students with the same NUIDs. Uh, so we put a unique key constraint on that. Uh, we also talked about check constraints here. Uh, another uh, alternative I think you can do is constraint and then name this uh, name of constraint right? and then check and then this will work too. Uh, that's the uh, syntax that I think I forgot last time. Uh, but otherwise, uh, a check constraint uh, will, uh, will be just fine. Uh, this, this would reject any uh, inserts or updates that would set IMDB rating outside of that range. Uh, but of course, as we, I said before, it's not, it's, it's, supported on MySQL and MariaDB, but it's not actually enforced on either one of those platforms. So if you were using Postgres or uh, like a proper database, Postgres or uh, SQL Server or something like that, then these check constraints would be uh, enforced. Please go ahead and feel free to design your databases with as many check constraints as you think uh, should be in there, uh, knowing that on a real, uh, like a, a, a decent database management system, that they would actually be enforced. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary, just, and also know that they will not be enforced, okay? All right, so before we in, uh, start inserting some records here to play around with, uh, what else? let's take care of the to-do as a next step here, okay? So uh, we wanted to create a director, so I'm going to go ahead and create another table. Create table, if not exists. I'll just go right to the chase on this one. If it doesn't exist, then we'll create it. Director. Otherwise, if it, uh, it exists, then it won't overwrite the table, or at least this won't result in a, an error. Uh, tell me, what, what, what defines a director? Uh, what, what, okay, what movies they make. We're going to have to tie these uh, tables together eventually. Hold on to that thought, though. Well, let's think about what a director is, who they are. A name, okay. 
So name, bar char 100. Should we do it like that? Just one single name? Probably not. That's a, that wouldn't be how you design your objects, right? You would want to separate those two things into a last name and a first name. Okay. First name. There we go. That looks good. Anything else for a director? Of course, middle name, second middle name, uh, suffix, title, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We'll keep it simple as far as names go. How do you identify a director? What should you always do with every table? Have a primary key. Not film ID, but director ID. That looks pretty good uh, for a uh, first draft here. Uh, we might want to come back and rethink this design. I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's our first draft right there. Okay. Uh, now, how do I tie these two tables together? Uh, what's the relationship between a director and a film? A director directs a film. If they're unsuccessful, they direct one film, right? I guess if they're unsuccessful, they direct zero films, uh, or if they're just starting out. But usually, a director, give me a direct, your, your favorite director. Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese. Oh, wow, they said that today in the main section, too. Right, what else? Who else? Huh? George Lucas. George Lucas. Okay. He's your favorite director? Oh, really? oh okay. <laughs> Prequels? Yay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Or just prequel memes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. So uh, George Lucas. So uh, George Lucas had directed at least five films right, that I know of. Star Wars episode uh, three. And then, of course, the prequels one, two, and three later on. Uh, THX 32. What, what was the number? 3200? Uh, whatever. THX something. Oh, and then, of course, uh, uh, American Graffiti. All right, so we've got a whole bunch there. So in other words, one director can direct many films. Now it can be the case that one film is, has several directors or a directorial team. I don't want to model that uh, that much complication. So I'm just going to go ahead and go say that there's a one to many relationship with the director. So that means that we've got a director at top and all the films that they have directed. We've got a parent-child relationship. And if we've got that, then the children need to be able to refer back up to its parent. So we need a foreign key in the child table here. This is the, the film table down here, the, the uh, uh, parent table, the director film up here. So what we need is we need a, uh, a foreign key. And now to do that, director ID, it's going to match. So I'm going to match the name, with the na uh, the, of the foreign key with the name of the primary key in the other table. I'm also going to match the type because otherwise you're comparing apples to oranges. If it were, this were a, a string, a var char, uh, you're going to try to compare that to an integer. That, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, uh, And I'm going to say that it's not null, because I want to enforce the constraint that a child cannot exist without the parent. If you have a film that has no director, then that's bad data. or that, the, I'm going to consider that bad data. If you don't want to consider that bad data, then of course you can allow that to be null. And now you've got a bunch of orphans and, uh, as children uh, with no parent, right? Not no, but I don't want that, right? There we go. Director, int, not null. Now that still doesn't com completely bring these two things together. All I'm saying over here in the film table is that you've got this integer that's called director ID. It has no connection to this director ID down here. What I need to do is I need to make that connection as a foreign key, foreign key. Uh, the foreign key that I want is the director ID, pulled from there, and it's going to reference it, references, it references uh, the director table, and what column does it represent or re reference in the director table? It references the director ID in the director table. And that builds my foreign key, and now these two things are connected through this, it's, it's yet another key constraint basically, just like this check constraint up here. Okay. Now let me go ahead and try to create these things. Right. Uh, let me move over here. It failed. Right. Uh, why did it fail? Well, I don't have my drop table if exists, so let's go ahead and put that director. All right. All right. There we go. It still fails. Cannot delete or update a parent row. Foreign key constraint fails. Right. So what did I say? You can't have orphans. All right. So 
if a child, uh, if a parent has to exist before the children, then what is the order that I want to create these tables? Child first, right? I need the director ID in order for the film to refer to that table. It refers to this table, the, this uh, director table. That director table has to exist first. So if you've got a table referring to another table, it has to exist first, just like a structure. If you're going to create a structure that owns another structure, A refers to B, B has to exist first. And so the order of de declaration matters here. Also, the order of deletion. If I create the director first and then the film, what order do I need to delete them in? In the reverse order, right? Delete the, um, oops, uh, no, that's, that's wrong. It should have been right. Uh, so there, I had the reverse order already. So I created director, then film. I need to delete film, then director. Right? That should work. Uh, oh, okay. Drop data. I, this is because I was working on the other section. Drop database server. There we go. And create database server. There, I just wiped away all the tables. And now this should work. Yep, there we go. Let's clear this out. Do it one more time. Show you that everything's green. Everything's good. OK. All right. Uh, well, what else can we do? What else would you want to model in this case? Anything? Films, directors, that's enough. Call it a day. Actors. Actors. All right. So actors are in films as well. So. Uh, Let's go ahead. Well, actually, before we do the before we do this, let's go ahead and insert some test data here to make sure that everything's working. So, if I'm going to insert some test data, which one do I need to insert first? Do I need a director and then a film, or a film and then a director? I need a director first because I the film is going to reference it. So, I need the parent first, and then I can create the children. So, I'm going to insert into uh, director uh, name uh, last name or first name and last name values. Let's see, I heard George Lucas. Let's do another director and another director. Uh, you said Martin Scorsese. I assume that's how it's spelled. Give me one more. Guillermo del Toro and who? Spielberg. Spielberg. Okay. Hold on to Steven Spielberg. Uh, Guillermo del Toro. All right. I don't know. Uh, you, it, it's your job to look that up now. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I, I can go ahead and do this, right? And if I look at all the directors, then you can see that. Each one of them has been six, uh, director, director, from director. There we go. Uh, and you can see that George Lucas, Martin Scorsese, and Guillermo del Toro uh, are all in there, no, one, two, and three. Uh, but of course, remember that you can go ahead and shorten this up. You can ins insert multiple records if you want to without having to cut and paste all that stuff. Uh, all you need is a comma delimited list of them, and then you can shorten it up a bit. And man, oh man, is this a perfect use case for block selection mode? Uh, because what you can do is you can set this up to be empty, right? Cut and paste 50 copies of that thing, and then cut and paste a uh, a bunch of stuff from an Excel file or some, or something like that using block selection mode. Select this column, cut paste. Select this column, cut paste. All right. So there we go. That's a little bit of short a shorter way of doing something. <coughs> Now let's go ahead and insert some films. Insert into film. Uh, what do I need for a film here? What is required? What is absolutely required data? Certainly a title, because that cannot be null. Do I have to supply my own film ID? No, because it's auto-incremented. Right? Uh, 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 release date is not allowed to be null now, but I've got a default value, so I don't have to provide one. Uh, anything else? Uh, director ID, exactly. That's not allowed to be null, so it's required. So I'll insert into the film title and director ID values. All right, let's do uh, with George Lucas here. 
uh, Star Wars. And the director is, well, since it's inserted first, we saw that it had a, a value of one. Uh, and American Graffiti. Uh, P FF. Hi, yeah, thank you. Uh, directed by one. Uh, what else? Let's have one more George Lucas film. All right, now you're going to have to look it up. THX. X, 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 whatever it is. All right, let's insert some for uh, Guillermo del Toro, uh, who's number three there. Uh, help me out. You, you, okay, Pan's Labyrinth. Labyrinth, right? Labyrinth. Labyrinth, right? Like that, yeah, there we go, that looks good. Three, um, Hellboy, right? One and two. One word. Right, all right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, execute this all, it, 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 it's fine. All right, so let's go ahead and look and see what those results of the film are. Film. There we go. Star Wars, American Graffiti, THX, <laughs> What is it? 1138, thank you. 1138, there. We'll run this again. There, now it's fixed. Uh, and uh, directors over here, one, two, and three. Now, was it a good strategy to hard code that to one? No, there's no guarantee that it's gonna, even gonna start at one. Uh, that's just the default for this particular database. Uh, so, and it, no, not only that, but what if I come up here and add yet another director? Uh, now here you said Steven, Steven, no, Steven Spielberg. Spielberg, that looks good, All right? Okay. Now what, well, now what's gonna happen? Well, now all that stuff is, uh, uh, all those uh, Guillermo del Toro films are now, uh, uh, directed by three, which is gonna be Steven Spielberg, All right? Not, not great. So let's not hard code those. Instead, let's use a nested query. Select the director ID from director where the last name is equal to, and then you could put in both the last name and the first name here if you really want to, but all my data is just for uh, uh, the, the, uh, these small ones, so del Toro, there we go. That's Guillermo del Toro, right? Oh, sorry, <laughs> Lucas, there we go. Let's get that right. Lucas, 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 and then this one is del Toro and del Toro. There we go, yay. And now I'm not hard coding any of these values, and if I go and change them, then uh, it should be all, uh, all good. And there, now they're directed by Guillermo del Toro again. Okay. All right, good so far. Now let's go ahead and do some actors. So create table if exists, uh, if, create table if not exists, actor. Right. What defines an actor? A uh, name, okay, so hey, that sounds eerily familiar. First name, last name, but maybe not a director ID instead of instead an actor ID. So this is this is sending off alarm bells already. This uh, was a big copy pasta, right? So should we have two tables that represent what are essentially people? An actor and a director. You can have directors that are actors, right? the example that we used uh, uh, in uh, this morning's class was um, uh, Quentin Tarantino. He's, he's had a cameo or a small bit in every single one of his films. Uh, you can also have actors that turn into directors, Ben Affleck, right? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. The, he did not direct uh, that first movie. Man, I'm trying to blank here, but who cares? All right, uh, so you can have actors that are directors and directors that are actors, or both one or the other, et cetera. Uh, should we have two tables here to represent essentially the same thing? Maybe not. 
I'm going to go ahead and go with this and see where it go, uh, see how we can maybe change it in the future. You're going to have the same question on your project. You have people in different roles. You have a person that could be a broker and two different types of brokers. Uh, you have a person that, that could just be, you know, a client. Right? You could have a person that has no connection to either one. It doesn't own any portfolios, doesn't manage any portfolios, is not a beneficiary. Maybe you could, if you really wanted to, have three or four different tables for a person for each one of those, single, uh, those roles. I would suggest that you not do that. Instead, have one table, with a, uh, you know, one person table here, and depending on the relationship that you define with this foreign key, that defines the role. So if you've got a foreign key in the film table here that's called director ID and it refers to a person's person ID, then that relationship there defines that they directed that film. If you've got a foreign key with a, the, uh, the, that's an actor ID that refers to a person person ID, then in that particular instance, that's modeling that they acted in that film instead. But for now, let's go ahead and, and, and do it like this, okay? All right, I want to make a connection between a film and an actor here. So what's the relationship here? Somewhat different than a director. Uh, that one actor, can, uh, if they're successful, can act in multiple films. And one film certainly might have more than one actor. Right? So what kind of relationship do we want? We want a many-to-many -many relationship, just like a platform and a game. How did we bring those two things together? With another table. That was called a join table. And that's what I'm going to do now. Create table if not exists. Now this is going to be my join table, be, it's a join table, table between actor and uh, film. Good name? No. Uh, film actor, is that a good name? Uh, that's a, when, when you put these two words together, this is an adjective and this is a noun. I want it to be one noun, actor film, right? Uh, that sounds a little bit better. Or you could make it, you could verbize it, if that's a word. You could say acted in or starred in or stars in or whatever. Uh, then you get into verb tenses. Is it past tense? Is it present progressive tense? Uh, is acting in, right? Uh, no. Let's just keep it simple. Actor film. I'm just taking the names of the two uh, the tables that are joining them together and I'm joining them together. Right. Don't get fancy. Remember, in computer science, there are only two hard things, cache and validation and naming things. Right? So uh, keep it simple. Uh, uh, that's how you solve that problem. Very first thing that I should do is create an actor film ID primary key not null auto increment. That should be the automatic first thing that you do or think of every time you create a, a table. Uh, because as we'll see at the end here, it gives you two second normal form for free. Right. Okay. Uh, what do I need here to bring two tables together? Yeah. I need the two, for, uh, two IDs, which will end up being two foreign keys. Okay. Uh, actor ID uh, int not null. And film ID int not null. And then, of course, I'm going to make those into foreign keys. Both of them. Actor ID refers to the actor table and the actor ID in that actor table. The film ID is going to reference the film table and the film ID in that film table. Comma, comma, comma. Good. Now, if you remember with that availability table in the video game database, we brought a game was published on this system in this year. That was an extra piece of data that belonged in the join table because it was a piece of data about that relationship. That uh, you could have a game uh, that's released on Xbox in 2019 and then it was released on PS4 in 2020. Right? And so that, that, that data was about that relationship so it belonged in the join table here. Uh, the example that we came up with earlier in the earlier section was um, uh, let's see, one award, right, Boolean. Right? Uh, that would mean that, that 
uh, this actor, when they starred in this film, won this award or they didn't, true or false, right? And you can, by the way, have Booleans. Uh, so you can use the keywords true, false, you can use zero, and anything other than zero. Uh, where does that come from? Uh, zero is false and anything else is true? Sounds like C to me, right? Uh, don't worry about that though. I mean, you can, you can put other data here too. Right. So like for example, won an award on this, okay? All right, let's make sure that it all comes together, all works, looks like it does. Of course, I do not have the drop table if exists exists for the actor and the act, uh, actor film. What order should I go in there? The actor film refers to both the actor and the film. So if I want to delete all those, where should I delete this join table? At the very first. Once that connection has been severed, then you can delete the actor uh, or, or the director or the, or the film. Now, is this all correct? Director before, after the film, actor after the film. That looks good. Yep, everything's good. Clear that out. Okay. All right. Any questions so far? No? So then what, uh, what's one problem that we might have here? Let's see how we, we put in film, film idea, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, we already did this last time. Here's one problem. Uh, this natural key that we're using that, that's external, uh, we still want it to be a key. We want it to be searchable. Uh, we also want it to be unique. Right? Uh, without this stuff right here, then you could have two films with the same EIRD. We put this in there last time to enforce uniqueness, but it's not going to be our primary key, it's just a, a secondary key. You can use the term secondary key if you want. All other non-primary keys are just secondary keys. Uh, but we can put a key on this to make it searchable, uh, and we can put a uniqueness constraint on it to ensure that no two films will have the same EIDR, uh, and that would be uh, considered bad data. What other redundancies might we have? I want to focus here on this actor film. So to demonstrate this, let's get some actual data in there. Uh, let's see, we have Star Wars, right? Okay, so uh, let's insert into actor, uh, last name, or first name, comma, last name, values. Oh, come on, really? Okay, Mark Hamill, there you go. Mark Hamill, uh, Hamill? Okay, good enough. I don't know. Hmm. All right. Who else starred in there? Terry? No. Terry. Terry. Yeah. There we go. Fisher or Fisher? Okay. And then Harrison Ford? There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and execute all this. And we've got those actors now. Let's go ahead and insert into actor film. Right. Uh, let's see. Uh, actor ID, film ID. And now we need to bring all of those together, right? So values, How? again, I could hard code those values, but I don't want to. Uh, let's go ahead and use a two nested uh, queries here. So the actor ID would be actor ID from actor, where last name is equal to Hamill. Right? And then the film would be select film ID from film, where title is equal to Star Wars, or Space Conflict. There we go. Uh, Hamill, Fisher, and Ford. There. I think that that's all okay. Find out. Yep. All right. Good. Now I've got three actors associated with one movie. Um, let me do one more. Copy, paste. Fisher twice. Perfectly happy with this. In fact, let's bring all that data model together. And look and see what it looks like. Select everything from film F, join 
actor film AF uh, on f dot film ID is equal to AF dot film ID. Join actor A on A dot actor ID is equal to AF dot actor ID. See why, why good naming conventions are nice? I didn't even have to think about that. Right? I remembered every single primary key because I followed the consistent naming convention. I remembered every single uh, you know, uh, uh, casing because I was doing the same case, uh, uh, camel and, and upper casing everywhere. Right? So Carrie Fisher started it twice. Is that good data or bad data? Right? And this is where code reviews come in, by the way. Right? You might consider, well, that's not that bad. Who cares? Right? Uh, maybe we do want to allow that. Okay. Um, maybe you, you, know, you argue with your partner, no, we shouldn't allow that kind of data. Right? So code review, is that good or bad? If it's good, then we're done. If it's bad, let's fix it. Right? How can we fix it and how can we prevent duplicate actor ID and film ID combinations? Well, up here I put a uniqueness constraint on the EIDR, right? Uh, by, uh, where is that? A unique key. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to put in a constraint, and I'm going to na a name of constraint. This is optional. Th by the way, those are back ticks. That is not a single quote. That is a back tick under your tilde on your keyboard. Uh, and that's a way of, uh, that's how, how you escape things. Because if I wanted to create a, uh, a table called select, I would not be able to do that, right? And you shouldn't do that anyway, because that's a keyword in, uh, in SQL. But you could if you escaped it with back ticks. Now you can call your table select. Don't do that, though. All right. All right. But uh, we, we have had uh, projects in the past where they did like an order customer system. And uh, and it was very natural to call a table order. Well, guess what? <laughs> order by, that's a reserved word. Uh, so to be able to do that, you had to back tick it. Right? And that's completely reasonable in that, in that use case. So there's my name of the constraint. It's going to be a unique constraint on, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to remember this. Uh, I might have to look this up. Uh, it's going to be a constraint on the actor ID and the film ID the combination thereof, both of those together. So if you've got two values here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can never have one, two, three, four, five, six again. Right? But you can have one, two, three, A, B, C, one, two, three, D, E, F. Right? You can have as many other uh, combinations here as you want, but these two things together forces the combination to be unique. Let's see if my uh, syntax is correct here. No, uh, oh, no, it was, it was correct. Now, name of constraint, I think that that is actually going to be optional. Yeah, a, a name will be generated for you instead. Uh, but of course, if you want to name them because you want to do metaprogramming later on, uh, you want to update that constraint to be dependent on, say, three things. You can do that as well. Now, should I do this? What kind of relate? This is auto-generated. These are going to be unique no matter what. So if these are always unique, then it doesn't matter what these combinations are. And I'm back at square one, so I don't want to do that. Uh, but I'll give this a, 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 a name, uh, unique actor film combo, right? combination. And now, let me clear this out. Now it's not going to let me do that duplicate entry down there. Right? This Carrie Fisher in there twice. Uh, let me go ahead and take that out with a comment. Run it again, and you can see that it actually works, but we're preventing Carrie Fisher from starting in it twice. Right? So you can do a lot of stuff here, uh, a lot of rules and constraints and uh, data integrity enforcement in your database that you can't do on flat files. Okay? All right. So questions so far on this? Copy. And... It. That'll be in the notes later on. Okay. All right. In fact, let's go over the notes. There's your. They're they're in the notes, right? Uh, so uh, to to round this out. Oops, that's not. Can I move this over here? 
Okay, yeah, I can. Good. All right, so summary, I guess. Uh, what we just did, basically, when we designed all these tables, is that we were uh, we were normalizing a database. Database normalization is pretty straightforward or intuitive. It's just like creating objects. When you, you think about an object, what is a person? Well, it's a first name and a last name. And those two things are separate, so we probably need two fields or two columns with respect to a database. Um, an address. Uh, well, an address is uh, a street, a city, state, zip. Well, that's a lot of things. Maybe I need another class for that. Maybe you need another table for that. Right? That kind of process of, oh, we, they've got multiple emails. I probably want a list of emails or a set of emails. I probably want another table for that with, with respect to database stuff. That process is called normalization. And there are three basic normal forms. First normal form, second normal form, and third normal form. There are other normal forms, fourth, fifth, uh, some, I think, Bacchus, no, no, that's something else. Uh, some other uh, normal forms, they deal with temporal stuff. So some, some piece of data that, that, that's good today is different tomorrow. And we need to normalize that out. Uh, don't worry about any of that stuff. For 99% of the stuff that you will do in your life, you just need normal, the thir uh, third normal form. Right? Most of them are like do not do's, right? So uh, the first normal form, first normal form, excuse me, is that each attribute, each attribute in a table only has atomic values. Atomic being indivisible, that you can't break it up any further. So if you've got a first name, comma, or last name, comma, first name, that's not atomic. Right? You can break that up further. Uh, if, if you've got a, a, a column that you uh, are storing emails in and it's a bunch of uh, comma delimited stuff and it's just one giant string, that's not atomic values. Split those up, create another table. So basically that every column, every column in a table holds only one value. A violation would be, of course, uh, not having a first name, last name in separate columns. Another violation would be a CSV string of e multiple emails. All right. So the solution is, of course, to split things out, split things out into their own columns, or another table, defining a one too many relation. Okay. Just like the e uh, like email. So I'm telling you right now, it would be bad if you uh, did not have an email table in your database design, right? That's screaming out to you that one person may have many emails. Right? It's also a violation if, if you hard code enough columns. That's not that as uh, egregious of a design issue. Uh, I've seen it before uh, where, well, nobody has more than three emails. So we'll go ahead and go with uh, column one, email one, column two, email two, column three, email three. Uh, the problem there is that if most people may only have one email, in which case you're wasting those other columns. You're having to write data, uh, database retrieval code uh, that uh, that checks to see if it's null or whatever, and, and you know, uh, and, and what if somebody does come along and say that they want so, they want a fourth email, right? So don't hard code enough columns because you don't know what enough is. Uh, instead, just create another table. Second normal form. I've always found confusing myself, uh, but it has to be first normal form. So this is basically a hierarchy. If it's not first normal form, it can never be second normal form. Uh, but it's second normal form and a uh, first normal form and no non prime attribute is dependent on a proper subset of prime attributes. Right. Don't worry about what that means. I'll show you some examples here that violate it, but basically. If you always have an auto incremented primary key, PK for short, uh, you get two normal form for free. And that's why I always consider it good practice to just put in a primary key, not null, int, or int, int, int primary key, not null, auto increment, you're done. Right? You get nor second normal form for free. Basically, a violation would look like the following. A purchase record may contain a customer ID, a store ID, and a store location. 
This really only happens when you've got a combination, a, 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 a composite key is what it's called. Uh, so here, a purchase is identified by the combination, the unique combination, just like the actors that we had, an actor and a, a film together, but we still had a prime, uh, prime key, uh, primary key uh, other than those two. Uh, but in this case, say that we don't have a primary key auto increment. Instead, we use that combination of customer ID and store ID to identify a purchase. This customer purchased this stuff at this location. If they purchase it at a different location, that's a different record. If a, a different person purchases at the same store, that's a different purchase, right? But store location, what is that dependent on? Is that dependent on the customer ID? Nope. It's only dependent on the store ID. So if this is your primary key right here, then a store location is only dependent on half of it. Right? And that's a violation of second normal form. You don't want that because it leads to the, uh, potential data anomalies. Uh, and what you should be doing is you should be separating this out into its own table anyway. Okay. Uh, but again, uh, the solution is to split things out into their own tables. Right? Don't make God tables, just like you don't make God classes. Right. Third normal form, right, the, the ultimate God table is just a flat CSV file where everything is dumped in there, just like on your first assignment. Right. Third normal form is second normal form. And so by transitivity, also, it has to be first normal form. Uh, uh, and no non-prime column is transitiv uh, transitively dependent on the key. Right. Dependent, yeah, that's right. All right, so I've asked you some 235 questions in the past. Have you, you've done logic, right? So what's transitivity? A implies B, and B implies C, implies that A implies C, right? Otherwise, it's not transitive. Right? It's a violation of transitivity. So suppose you had a, a per, another purchase order or something, price per unit, uh, and a number of units. I'll back tick these so that they look like code. Price per unit and and you stored a total cost, which was equal to price per unit times number of units in a column. Why would that why, why might that be bad? So number of units, say 100. I'm, I'm going to order 100 uh, valve indexes. Uh, price per unit. Does anybody know how much it is? A thousand bucks starting. So a hundred thousand dollars total, right? Uh, but now uh, Valve decides, oh, that's too much. We need we need uh, to lower the prices. Eight hundred dollars now, right? So we had price per unit originally one thousand uh, dollars, one hundred units, and so therefore the total cost was going to be a hundred thousand dollars. Is it a hundred thousand dollars anymore if they lower their price to eight hundred? No, it's only eighty thousand dollars. Right? And that data is now stale. That data is out of sync with these two other things. If you can compute total cost from the, uh, the values stored in those columns, then don't store it. Just recompute it as needed. Right? You, you can either recompute it in SQL directly by taking that column and that column and multiplying them together as total cost. Right? And you can pull that out into the, 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 the result table, the derived table. Uh, or uh, or you do it in code. You load it up in your Java code, which we'll talk about JDBC uh, after the midterm, uh, and then you then you compute it in memory. You don't store it. Right? Now, if you need to store a historical cost, then sure, that's a great use case, because at this point in time, on this invoice, we charge them hundred thousand dollars. Three months from now, when they lower their prices to eight hundred dollars, then that's a different uh, that's a different scenario. So you could take a snapshot and you would have a justification there. Uh, but in this case, if the prices are always live in your tables, don't store that third column right there. Right? Uh, basically, the, the total cost is transitively dependent on price per unit and number of units because it is the product of both of those things. Don't store it. Right? So bottom line, bottom line is that normalization is common sense, or good design, or intuition. Right? You just have to get used to it. Right? 
Uh, once you see the consequence of not following normalization, then you immediately, oh, we should have, shouldn't have done that, right? Uh, we shouldn't have stored all the emails in one big giant string because now I'm going to have to uh, split them out and oops, somebody forgot to put in the comma, uh, or it, it, it's, it, it's gonna ruin all of your data basically, okay? Uh, and you can also remember this mnemonic device, or I don't know if it's a mnemonic device or not, but every non-key attribute must provide a fact about the key, that's first normal form, uh, the whole key, that's second normal form, and nothing, or and nothing, and nothing but the key. So that third normal form. So help me, who was it again? Cod, Edgar Cod, the inventor of the uh, of the uh, relational uh, database uh, idea, basically. Right. So third normal form, sec first, second, and third normal form are the basic normal forms. Uh, and, uh, and, and you know, you can kind of discuss it with your partner, go back and forth. Oh, I think that's a violation of second normal form or something like that. I think we should go in a different direction. Go to an LA, talk to them, and see, what, in your opinion, is this first normal form or second normal form uh, compliant, et cetera. There's really, I don't, I don't know of any tool out there, like a static analysis tool like you would have with code that can, uh, that, that, that's a good question. If anybody finds one, let me know. I'm sure that there might be something out there. Uh, a static analysis tool that can take your SQL stuff uh, and then say, oh, this is a violation of first normal form. I don't know if there's su such a thing out there. Oh, by the way, uh, just as a review here, uh, let's, let's save this as uh, foo on the desktop. And remember, let's, let's make sure that all of the, our relations, like the relations that we were thinking about, are actually conformant. So remember how you can create an ER diagram, new model, and it's on the other screen so you can't see it. New model, and then you can go up to file, import, reverse engineer MySQL create script, place your stuff on a diagram. Uh, there's foo, execute that, continue, and close, and there. So do, does, does this represent the relations that we had before? Yeah, in fact, that looks eerily familiar. What's that structure? The way that I've set it out here. It's a video game database, just with films. Right. Okay, and that's why I wanted, I didn't want to, a one person table. I just wanted to repeat what we had before. Right. Okay, you can also do it with student enrollments. You can do it with books. I think that's what I do in the video series. Uh, you can do a bunch of different things. Right. All right, so there, there is a lot more to learn about databases. Right. Um, there are things that we never even uh, tried to cover here. There are things like triggers, views, and stored procedures. Triggers are basically procedures that get triggered upon uh, some event. So you could create a trigger that updates a column like last updated. Anytime that somebody updates a record, it also triggers an update of the string over here that says it was last updated like this. Or anytime somebody logs in, you can automatically update a column that said last time that they logged in or something. Those are triggers. Views are really nice because they provide a read-only view of your database. If you've got 50 tables here and you want to give uh, access to this column in that table and those two tables over there in their entirety, you want to give somebody access to, to view those things but not necessarily change them, you have that fine grain control for security and for data integrity. Uh, because if you've got a, uh, an application that is just meant to show stuff, only give it a view. Don't let it uh, any up update any of the, of the data. Right? There are also stored procedures, which are basically functions, but on the database end. So you can treat them like a query and, and make a query to this function, and the function actually runs and does a bunch of stuff. Uh, temp tables and a bunch of other stuff that you can do uh, with full uh, you know, the cursors. Uh, you can have variables in your SQL scripts uh, that get updated. You can write loops. You can do all this kind of stuff in SQL. We're not going to go that far. Right? Security. Um, don't store passwords, obviously. Uh, at least unhashed passwords. 
Uh, but uh, the, the, now you've got uh, uh, the, the ability to uh, restrict access in a database. Usually your database tier, in fact, your database server is completely separate from your application server because it's serving multiple other servers. Uh, and that gets into multi-tier architecture, which we'll talk about after uh, the, uh, or right, after, uh, right before the break, right? uh, spring break, that is. One thing that I like to mention, because it is so, it's a, such a common pattern, so with object-oriented programming, you have design patterns, uh, common things that you can do that you get in the good habits, uh, uh, like creational patterns and stuff like that. Well, you also have kind of patterns with databases. One of those patterns is hard versus soft deletes. A hard delete is when you actually use the delete keyword and you delete a record. That is gone forever. Unless you backed up the database at some point and pull out that record, it is gone. There's no undelete. Right? You can make an undelete. Uh, what you can do instead is soft deletes, where you define this other column and call it is active, which is a Boolean. True if it's active, false if it's inactive. So when you go to delete something, you simply set that column value to false and it's no longer active but you didn't actually delete the record. Now to undelete it, you go back in and you set it to true. Now it's active again. Right? And I've done this all over the place because you, you have ID10T users all over the place. Right? Everybody knows ID10T, right? All right. ID10T, there, all right. idiots. Uh, that, 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 uh, they, that, even if you put on the front end, are you absolutely sure you want to delete this? This, this cannot be undone, yes. Are you absolutely, absolutely sure? Yes. Right? And they still delete it. Right? Well, if you program it with a hard delete, it's gone, right? unless you go to a database backup. If you program it with a soft delete, what I told the other section is, you can say, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll work diligently. I'll, I'll work for the next three days on that, uh, see what I can do. Right? Uh, and then uh, you go off and you play video games for a couple hours or something like that. Uh, you come back and you say, you, you flip a switch and set is active to true. Uh, you know what, I, I, I call him back, I, I, I worked on it all night, or I worked on it really, really hard, and I was able to, to restore those records. Uh, so, uh, you know, if you ever need anything again like that, please don't hesitate to call, right? Now, the, now you're the hero, right? Uh, that's what all engineers do, by the way. That's where, you know, Scotty, you Scotty it, right? So if you ever need to estimate time for something, just like Scotty told, uh, we need the engines back online, I, I need 10 hours to restore those engines, engines or the, the power, Right? Well, you only have five, and okay, I'll, it, you can actually do it in two. Right? So you set your high, uh, high expectations to non-technical people, or and you hope that they're non-technical because then they can see right through you. Right? <laughs> All right, so uh, though there's a lot more to learn about databases that we're not going to be able to fit in here. But one other thing that I do want to mention because it's, uh, it's germane to your project is the uh, OOP model versus the relational model. So with the relational model, in other words, databases, you only have data, right? You do have stored procedures, but uh, you don't really have inheritance, right? Uh, OOP has inheritance and behavior. Right? Uh, the relational model, that is databases, does not. not does not really. Right? They do have behavior with stored procedures, but that's not the same thing. So one question is how to resolve this. How to resolve this disconnect. So in particular, how do you handle inheritance? How do you model inheritance in a relational database management system? RDBM. Relational database management system. Okay. There we go. Ideas? We're already doing it for you. Hint. In your data files, how are we modeling inheritance? Yeah. Okay, so if it were a JSON or uh, or XML, you you could definitely have the class name there, and then then you would know. Oh, okay, well that class is a subclass of this asset class over here. But what about the data files, the original data files, the DAT files? How do you know the difference between what assets do you have? A stock, a private investment, and a deposit account? How do you distinguish those? Uh, yeah, the, and that's called a discriminator column, right? Or so you can, you can use a single table. This is a single table inheritance hierarchy uh, strategy, I guess. Uh, and, uh, and use a 
dis discriminator column slash value, right? So D, S, and P, right? Uh, and then if you ever need to introduce a new, uh, a new class, well, guess what? That's just a different value in your database. If you delete a class, then that means that you just go in and delete everything with, with Ds in them uh, in that column, right? Extremely easy, right? That's what I suggest that you do. There are alternatives. There's a class per, or there's a table per class, or a table per subclass, that is stub uh, strategies, where you've got an asset, you've got a stocks, uh, private investments, and uh, deposit accounts, four tables. Right? And the way that you uh, define the inheritance is with a foreign key back up to the super table, or the super class gets really complicated. Uh, not only that, but when you extend your application and you add a brand new asset type, that means that you have to change your database and add a brand new table type. Uh, with, a, uh, uh, with a table per subclass, that means that uh, you wouldn't have one for asset, you would only have one for the three subclasses, uh, the actual stubs, but if there's an abstract class, of course you would never need a table for that because uh, you could never instantiate an abstract class. Right? So. Those are alternatives. I would suggest that you go with the simplest one. Right? Remember the KISS principle. What is it? Keep it simple. There's got to be another better. There's got to be another S. Super guy. Right. There we go. More positive. Keep it simple, stupid. Fine. All right. There we go. All right, so uh, you could also do it with, a, uh, in this case, you could do it with a, a varchar one. Uh, you could do it with a varchar and then a whole string. Uh, you could do it with a, a numerated type. Uh, just something to be able to uh, 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 you know, discriminate between what the types of the classes are. All right, All right. any questions? No? Then 